I want to bring in um, attorney Misty Maris. She has been uh, following this case very closely, helping us understand the legalities of what we can expect and also the process. Uh, Misty, walk us through, um, for, for those of us outside of the legal field, uh, the steps that are going to happen tomorrow as the former president uh, faces a judge, uh, what he will be going through, what that entails. Yes, absolutely, Marnie. So President Trump is going to go through an arraignment. He will be fingerprinted. He will be photographed. Most of the time in these cases, they are handcuffed. It is unlikely that President Trump will be handcuffed. If he is, generally in New York, when people are facing what are white collar crimes, they are handcuffed to the front as opposed to the back. He's going to be escorted by Secret Service through this entire process. Because he is the former president, he has Secret Service protection for the rest of his life. So it's going to be a bit different than your typical defendant walking into the courtroom because of those protections that are going to be in place and the considerations of the Secret Service. He will appear before the judge. He will likely plead not guilty, and he will be released on his own recognizance. That's because in New York, the types of crimes that we anticipate he's charged with, nonviolent crimes, are the, the defendants are released on their own recognizance. He will be free to go back to Mar-a-Lago, to go back to Florida, which is what we anticipate. Uh, but he will go through the regular booking procedures. I am guessing that his attorneys are working very closely with court staff, district attorneys on his appearance. Remember, he is a Florida resident. Uh, he could have challenged extradition, which would have required a legal process. He is not. He is voluntarily appearing. It's unlikely he will do what has been qualified as what's called the perp walk. That was a term coined by none other than Rudy Giuliani because of the concerns about his safety and the Secret Service. So I don't know how much we will see of this process as the media and as viewers, since there are certainly some bigger safety concerns and the Secret Service is going to be handling those. Right. And you bring up a good point because how much access will the media and the public have to the process and the proceedings moving forward? Uh, as I spoke to you earlier, you said the judge is not a big fan of the media, so it's unlikely he will change anything in terms of access. I agree with that 100%. Yes, we discussed that earlier. This judge does not like the media circus. He wants to keep everything to the charges, what's relevant to the charges. He does not like distractions in the courtroom. He's not going to be one who wants to hear about political type arguments or the politicalization of the process. He is very, very strict and stringent on the law and the rule of court. So I do not think that there will be any leeway from this judge on media in the courtroom. I think it will be the courthouse steps only, and who knows what limitations might be imposed depending on what is going on outside the court in that sense, whether or not there's gag orders, all of that could be at play in a case that's this high profile. And we're talking about the potential of 30 counts. So remind people of the possible charges in this case. Marnie, this is what's so interesting. So previously, reports had indicated that this was going to be a misdemeanor falsification of business records charge that was going to be bootstrapped with a felony charge, which is the falsification of business records was for the purpose of covering up another crime. What we believe that underlying crime to be was either a federal or state election law crime, meaning that payments made from the Trump organization to Stormy Daniels uh, were, were part of his election, were part of his election funds. And so it was supposed to be disclosed under the election law. That's what we believed. Now it appears, based on what we're hearing, there's 30 plus charges. What could they be? Well, they could relate to those business records charges being separate and apart. Every single time there's a filing relating to those business records, a payment made, and this is all based on a phony retainer agreement, or that's the allegation. Every time a payment is made, these ongoing violations could all be separate charges. Also, it could be charges relating to the Trump organization itself. Remember, we just saw a trial, a criminal trial for the Trump organization, Alan Weisselberg. Uh, he, he pled guilty. Was there evidence that came out during the course of that trial that's leading to other business type crimes that are now going to come in to this indictment? We won't know. It's important to understand the grand jury process. 
It is a secret process. The fact that we know anything is shocking. So it's a secret prosecutorial process. It is not for public knowledge. It is done behind closed doors. And so the only time we're really going to know the true allegations and the true charges that are being raised is tomorrow when that document is unsealed. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.